Hello, young neighbors. Welcome to Junior Science. Today, we're going to talk about automobiles. We're going to open them up, look inside, and find out what makes them go. Hundred and eighty-seven years ago, in 1832, the world's first electric vehicle was born in the Scottish countryside by a man named Robert Anderson. Since then, the automotive industry has been constantly evolving, with better engineering and longer ranges for these vehicles to be driven. It's a definite no-brainer that a lot of big automotive companies are moving into the electric industry. It would not have been difficult for an engineer at that time to set down his major objectives. They were greater safety, economy and dependability, better appearance, riding comfort, and ease of handling, and more room. Engineers well knew what you, the motorist, wanted, and they had their work cut out for them. It was their job to find out how improvements could be made and still keep down the initial cost of the car. That was the beginning of a new world in motor. With better designs and a better user experience, the future of the automotive industry is looking pretty good. A couple once were seated in a little motor car. They were sweethearts, and they didn't care who knew. They were holding hands together as the motor loudly roared, and the price of gas went up to 22. Tesla just announced their new Cybertruck just a few days ago. It left a lot of people speechless, with very polarizing reviews on both sides. Some say it is the best electric vehicle they've ever seen, well, some say that it looks like the warthog from Halo. Love it or hate it, it's here to stay. And I am proud of this new vehicle design. This is everything that I've dreamed of since I was a kid. This is what I thought the future would look like. And I am very excited to see this on the road next year. With its all stainless steel body and bulletproof glass, and that's right, bulletproof glass. Despite a ball going through the window at the live demo in California, I mean, this thing could probably deflect sonar with its very iconic and very geometrical shape. It looks like it has taken inspiration from a submarine. I mean, this thing is pretty wicked. I really like it. But how did we get here? How are so many people not on board with this design? This vehicle looks exactly like the future. Shouldn't we be happy? Let's take a look at vehicles from the past and the present. What led us to the future? Between 1899 and 1900, more electric vehicles were sold in the U.S. than any other gasoline-powered competitor. When you think of the first automobile, what do you imagine? Do you see something that resembles a horseless carriage? The first motor car had to be hand-cranked and could only go just a few miles per hour. If you got into an accident with one of these things, you probably just died because most of them didn't even have any safety features that we know and use today. Johnny? Yeah? How fast are we going? Oh, she's doing almost 20 miles an hour. Why? 
Oh, the breeze is making me cold. Put your arm around me, Johnny. Golly, I wouldn't dare. Why not? Well, do you realize what would happen if I took my hands off the wheel? Let's see. Well, okay. It wasn't until 1912 when the first steel automotive roof was invented, and in 1935, GM made the metal roof an industry standard for most vehicles. Before that, canvas was king. For most electric vehicles in the early days, they were pretty much destined for short trips around the city, and they typically costed more than their rival, the internal combustion engine. The first stroke is called intake. In this stroke, the intake valve opens, the piston moves down, and a mixture of gasoline and air is sucked into the cylinder. Now, the mixture of gasoline and air can be exploded just the way it is, but we get more power out of it if we compress it before we explode it. So the second stroke in each cylinder is compression. These and other factors contributed to the decline of electric vehicles as a viable option, leaving internal combustion engine cars to rule the road and take on many different shapes and sizes. The future of the electric vehicle looked very bleak indeed. That is, until the oil crisis of the 1970s, leaving automakers to look into alternative fuel sources. By that time, it seemed like electric vehicles would be making a comeback. But sadly, prices stabilized in the 1980s, and the elusive electric dream went with it. But interestingly enough, the most popular electric vehicle in the 70s was the Sebring Vanguard, which oddly resembles the Cybertruck. You can see for yourself, a lot of electric vehicles were made in the 1970s, but not very many sold because of the high cost and low ranges that they could drive. It wasn't until the world debut of the Prius in the 90s, when electric vehicles would rise in popularity again. Then in 2006, Tesla proposed a revolutionary new car that would change the world forever. And in 2011, the Roadster was born. From that moment on, history would not be repeating itself. After years of innovation and determination, the electric vehicle is now the car of the future, Cybertruck. The bold new design that will carry us into the new age. Thank you. At first glance, it seems these men deal principally in mad whimsies. But behind every design, no matter how bizarre it appears, must be sound knowledge of engineering and production practice. Beauty, yes. But with it must be combined utility. Utility.